this is a reminder to repost your old best content on a regular basis. And the way that it, you might think about this is, you know, imagine you heard one of your favorite songs on the radio. And as always, you enjoyed it. And the next time they play it again, you'll enjoy it again. And that's what, what's happening with your audience and your best content as well. Um, and some of you watching this are, well, I, I, there are two types of people watching this. One is that you've already written a lot of content or recorded a lot of content over years. And you have not been, been having some kind of regular rhythm of taking the old best stuff and then and then reposting it. The other type uh, of person watching this might not have much content uh, yet. And therefore, your first thing to do is to uh, give yourself a rhythm of experimentation. Um, experiment with your ideas, with your stories, with experiences, with your noticings in your industry, in your client work, or just in your own personal development. Post as much as you can so that you can notice which of your things resonate the most with your audience. And at first, your audience is your friends, your Facebook friends, or the few people following you on Instagram, or your five YouTube subscribers, or whatever. At first, of course, we all start with a small, small, almost non existent audience. But as we experiment, with our stories and our experiences and um, things that are meaningful to you, right? Like the things that are meaningful to you, especially as related to your work, as you experiment and put those things out there, you will notice that some of your posts get more traction than others. Really, I mean, maybe you usually get zero uh, reactions. You usually get no likes, no comments, but if you notice one of your posts gets two likes versus zero, obviously that one got more of a reaction. You still have a small audience. So of course you only get two likes occasionally, right? Some of you maybe get a few likes regularly and then some posts get like 10 or a few dozen likes. Well, take note of those things, uh, particularly when you're talking about some topic within your field of expertise, not just uh, you posted a picture of yourself, or you posted a picture of, oh, I always need to point to the right place. <laughs> you know, Zoom is, um, Zoom is, uh, pointing, point. Zoom, it, Zoom does mirroring. So it always confuses me. So I'm actually pointing to my, yeah, that's right. Okay. So there's my dog. Um, so, y you know, usually, um, you know, when you create uh, content about your field, it, gets fewer reactions and likes than if you post a picture of your dog, <laughs> a video of your dog, or um, or video of your or picture of yourself, like a selfie picture. Everyone wants to support you. Oh yeah, you look good. You look good. That's not what I'm talking about as your best pieces of content. Okay. I'm talking about when you are trying to teach something related to your field, when you're telling a story or giving a perspective or telling some kind of philosophy or giving some kind of framework or advancing your body of work you know your selfies aren't your body of work but your your insights about your work is part of your body of work that is those are the kinds of posts that i'm talking about post those things on a regular basis and then take note of which of those posts does better than other posts okay because that is your clue for what to keep as one of your best pieces of content and as I said at the beginning of this video, it's a good idea to be reposting your best pieces of content on a regular basis because guess what? That's actually how you grow your audience. I uh, maybe you thought that growing an audience was just about posting a lot of a lot of stuff over time, and yeah, it'll grow extremely slowly. But when you repost your your older popular post, you, you know, you do it again and again and again. That's what people go, oh, I, I I love that post. Oh, that was a really useful insight or that was really funny or yeah, I, I needed to see that reminder again. And then they're more likely to, well, just simply their liking and commenting on it will make that piece of content seen by more of your followers, but they might then share it with their followers. And so again, reposting your older best stuff 
is how we grow our audience in terms of content distribution. Okay. And well, that's one of the, one of the main ways that we do it. Um, now I do have to say that, uh, most of you, like I said, there's two types of people. You're either not posting enough to notice which pieces are doing well, or you're posting a lot and you aren't tracking the stats. Now, if you want to dive deep into tracking the stats, you can take my course on authentic content flow, but let me just give you a really simple way of doing it. Just open up a document, a Google doc or whatever. Okay. And when you notice one of your insight posts, one of your posts about your body of work, about your framework, about your expertise, about client stories that, you know, obviously don't reveal your client name unless they want you to, but any posts related to your work, related to your insights about your field, if they, if it does better than other ones like this, take that link for that post and put it in the Google doc and write a few words about what it's about. That can be as simple as that. And just start keeping a list. And the, then the goal, my, my encouragement for your, for what the goal you should strive for is to have a list of a hundred, a hundred of your best posts over the months and over the years. I don't know how often you post these kinds of things. Again, posts about your, or your field, your work, your client work, your insights about your yourself as related to your body of work. Um, meaning like, let's say you're, you are a relationship coach. So you would be posting about insights that came out of your client sessions, perhaps, you would be posting about your own relationship because it's related to your work as a relationship coach, right? You would be posting about stories you've noticed in the news about people's relationships and your take on it, da, 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 da. all the different things that you could post related to your, your area of work, right? If you are a uh, spiritual uh, mentor, right? You can post about uh, obviously all your thoughts about spirituality and spiritual practice and things that came out of client sessions, your own spiritual uh, musings and practices and things in the world and your spiritual take on them, all that stuff, right? As you post about these things, like I said, notice which ones get better traction, better, more comments and, and likes than your typical, which means you need to understand what your typical baseline is, right? Not everything that gets a like is, oh, that's, that's, that's a good one. No, like I said, what... This is why, you know, if you track it in a more detailed way, like I do with a spreadsheet, I teach that in my course, but whatever. Like if you, you have to notice what the average is. Do you usually get two likes? Do you usually get zero likes? Do you usually get on average seven likes or 15 likes? Well, then that's the average. That's just the, the baseline. Anything beyond that, oh my gosh, I usually get seven likes and this one got, you know, 12 right? Then, then you take note of that and put it in your document so you can start keeping your best 100. And then once you get to your best 100, as you keep building it up, it's, it's quite satisfying. Uh, and you should be proud of yourself for developing this. It's, it's satisfying to see you develop the, your, your best 100. I mean, it's amazing. It's your, it's your, it's your body of work. And as you keep developing them, and then, then, you, then you, you can start recycling these best 100. Now, how, how often do you recycle your best old posts? I mean, ideally, the longer you wait, the better, of course, because the more time has gone by so that when they see it again, they're like, oh yeah, this looks kind of familiar, but I had forgotten what it said or what what you know what this was about, right? I mean, if, if, you, if you repost your best, you, you did something, it went well and you reposted a month later, maybe that's okay. But if you can wait six months, 12 months or even more, that's, that's even better because, and, and over time as you, as you develop, and, and just as an example, by the way, this very video is one of my older best posts. I mean, older best ideas. And I, I actually looked at when was the last time I recorded this topic? It was just about three, almost exactly three years ago. <laughs> so you get a sense of it. That's, that's the kind of rhythm that I have because I have so much content now and I track it so well that I know, okay, this is one I have, I have more than way more than a hundred, you know, uh, worthy posts, the things that got above average likes compared to my baseline that I'm now recycling 
only every two to three, sometimes four years. Um, but in fact, some of you may still remember this idea. Uh, I Maybe because you're in my other courses and I do talk about this idea in other courses. So maybe you heard it recently. But but this this idea as a free video, um, as a free blog post uh, was, was three years ago. Okay. So imagine you had 100. Now, this is, again, this is the project that I encourage you to set yourself a dedication, you know, a dedicated approach to. Get to your 100 best posts. Track it. Now, even before you get there, you can start reposting, re reposting some of your best ones. Try to wait a few months, okay, at least if you can. And then imagine you got to 100. That means you have one to two years of best content. Like you don't, you don't even need to create any more new content. That's the, that's the dream, right? Some of you might have like, oh, I don't, ah, oh, God, I have to create new things all the time. No, you don't. Once you get to your best 100, you could technically just coast on your best content. Every time you repost from your old best ones, people are like, that was amazing. <laughs> that was brilliant. You know, or they like, they, it really starts this process of, wow, people will never come, they come to see your post. It's always good. It's always good. It's always good. Now, that's the dream for a lot of, a lot of us here. But I also want to encourage you to still, you know, this is, this is the temptation. In fact, I saw a, a creator, um, uh, some time ago said, I haven't created anything new in a year. And he was saying that like to be proud. And I'm like, okay, I get it. You, it's good. Good job on tracking your best stuff and then just reposting your best stuff. But it's still good for your own creativity fitness to be cre exploring, experimenting, practicing the willingness to so-called fail, practicing the willingness to put something out there experimentally and knowing that it might not get any likes. That's still a good practice. Being on the edge of creativity, essentially, rather than just coasting on what you've already done for, for forever. So I still do creating new stuff on a regular basis. I, But you'll also see that I post uh, old best stuff on a regular basis too. For example, my Instagram if you follow me on Instagram, uh, about two thirds, two thirds of the things I post on Instagram are old best stuff. So people on Instagram be, oh my gosh, you're always so insightful. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe you don't think so, but, but I do get those kinds of comments. And it's like, well, it's not, it's not because I'm always insightful. It's because I tracked it over years and then just are reposting the old best stuff. I'm often not insightful. I'm often, you know, I make videos, go, go to my YouTube channel, right? Go to my YouTube channel or or um, my most raw and non-insightful things are on Twitter, on x.com. That's where I, that's where my most stage one testing content is. So if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see that it's mostly not, not very smart. It's mostly not very interesting. But then I notice which of those things get, okay, so, so this is a good example. My Twitter posts usually get zero likes. You should get no reactions at all, none. Even with 4,000 so-called followers, I don't know, a lot of my followers are really from a long time ago, so they're probably not even looking at Twitter anymore. But anyway, whatever. I, I may have an actual couple dozen people who see my posts on a regular basis. So even with a couple dozen people seeing it regularly, I often get no likes on Twitter, none. And that's that's fine. I don't, I don't, I'm not asking you to go there and like my post because then it messes up my 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 tracking of stats. So my baseline there is zero. Now I'm saying this because it might resonate with some of you, right? Some of you might might have zero as your baseline. And my my dog is uh, going to because his mommy is just walking around outside now. Anyway, um, my baseline is zero on Twitter. Zero likes, zero reactions, zero comments. And so when I get like two, like I said, this is this is real for me right now. When I get two likes on a post, I'm like, oh. Okay, good. This is uh, this is worth taking to the next stage. I'm not saying that's one of my best. I have a multi-stage, uh, multi-stage process of creating. Um, again, if you want to take my content course, I dive deep into this and give you my hat manual and teach you through all the product. But basically, it's this: I post sort of like experimental ideas on Twitter. I try to do it Monday through Friday uh, nowadays. I try to do Monday through Friday. And then um, twice a week, I will notice which one got two likes. 
Okay. The ones that got two likes, I then put it on threads. Threads is the, uh, you might say the liberal or progressive version of Twitter, which is more conservative. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So I'm, I'm in both places. So I put the, uh, the, the better of my Twitter ramblings on threads. And then uh, once every two weeks when I'm writing a new blog post, I go to my threads and I see which ones I feel like writing because the threads ones are, are the better of my Twitter ones. Anyway, I, I then take the threads ones and then I expand it out into a blog post. And still I put it on my blog, and, but my blog posts are still what I consider stage one because it's really the first time it's an ex, it, it, the thought is in an expanded form with more structure, with more thoughtfulness. And I still consider that to be stage one content. It's the first time that the, the complete thought has touched my audience. And then I notice of, of my blog posts, which I put onto Substack, LinkedIn, Medium, and my own website, you don't have to do all those. This is important. You don't have to do all of them. I teach social media for a living, so I have to try all of them. But you can just pick wherever you usually, so this is important, right? Wherever you usually get the most reactions is where you should be testing your content, right? So maybe for a lot of you, that's your Facebook profile. That's for a lot of us, that's true. You have your Facebook friends are the, the ones most likely to like your things. And maybe, like I said, your baseline might be five likes. You have just five very kind friends who no matter what you say, they just click like, right? And they, they don't even read it, right? So your baseline is five likes. Oh, this one got 12 likes. Okay, you take a note of that, right? Anyway, so go where you usually get the most likes and that's where you can experiment. And then notice which ones get above average baseline likes and then take note of that and then start reposting these on a regular basis. And so my rhythm nowadays, I've, I've already started telling you my rhythm, but, but more holistically in terms of my weekly, monthly rhythm, is that I, because I have so much old best stuff to repost, I end up doing, like, I basically do three pieces of content per week. And two of those three pieces of content are definitely a repost from something older. And I always try to improve it a little bit. Before I repost it, I try to improve it a little bit because um, why not? I, I take a couple minutes to maybe uh, update the writing a little bit. Um, if I can add another example, I, I will to make the post even more relevant. If it's a video, I will basically edit the video a little bit, maybe add subtitles, maybe um, cut out a few, I don't know, whatever, whatever video editing lightly that I can do. I always say work lightly, create lightly, repost lightly. So you don't have to work so hard when you repost something, you don't have to improve it a lot. Maybe the title can be improved, but just make a few improvements, knowing that the core of the content is already above average good, and then you repost it, okay? So these days, like I said, two out of three pieces of content I post every week are reposted, and then one out of three is something new, something I'm experimenting with. It may or, I, it may, or may not get any likes. But the nice thing about <clears throat> having this old content to repost, the old best stuff to repost, is that you'll get more encouraged. At first, right? At first, when you're starting creating your content journey, you have a tiny audience, it's, it's not encouraging because most of your content doesn't get much traction. This is why I encourage you to post where you typically get a, at least a few likes, maybe your Facebook profile, like I said, okay? So that you get some encouragement in the beginning and then notice which pieces get even more than, you, than better and then start tracking your best stuff so that when you repost your best stuff, that's really when you get more encouragement and people go, oh, that was brilliant, or that was that was really meaningful, or oh yeah, that was helpful, good reminder, whatever it might be. So, um, and just I'll, I'll end by <clears throat> reminding you, uh, one of my one of my best messages about content creation is to do it as a practice of creativity fitness. Do it as a practice of beneficial self discipline. There is, I mean, I, I could rant on this, but I won't go on too long. There is such a lack of self-discipline these days um, because of there's so much distraction these days. And people, and a lot of you here, by the way, um, replace caretaking for others with your self-discipline. 
So instead of self-care and self-discipline, you go, well, you're taking care of other people. That seems like you're a good person. And you are, of course. But then it can become uh, a bound boundaryless life where you're just always taking care of other people, responding to other people or whatever it may be. Saying yes, too many yeses, not enough no, so that you can focus and be self-disciplined on creating your content and and fulfilling your content rhythm um, dedicating yourself to it and coming back to it again and again and again, knowing that I've just given you this project of your best 100 pieces of content and you keep working on that until you get there and even more. So see this practice, see this project as not just, oh, I got to get to there. Once I get there, then I'll be good. The whole journey <clears throat> is, a, is a precious opportunity every day or however often you create. It's a precious opportunity to practice expanding your um, ability to communicate well. You're, it's expanding your depth of understanding of yourself and of the world and of other people. The way, you, the way you explore and prove your understanding is through content. So every time you create, it is a precious opportunity for deepening your understanding, for expanding your understanding, for practicing your creativity, fitness, and your beneficial self-discipline. I hope this is helpful, and um, I hope you will take on this project. Uh, if it is helpful or if you have any questions, um, comment below. And like I said, I have, a, I have an entire course called Authentic Content Flow that you might want to look into, and it dives deep into all this stuff, all the processes, all the templates. But hopefully what I've already given you is enough for most of you to really get going on this project, this worthwhile project of getting to your best 100 pieces of content. Thanks for joining me on this journey and see you in the next video. Blessings.